Number one has us drawing a rough sketch of the graph of g of x, which is x minus 3 times x plus 1 times 7x minus 2. And so I'm just going to draw an axis here, so an x and a y axis. And let's get some points on here. So let's say that this is about 5. So we could go, actually, let's um, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five this way, and then six, seven. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's just get a couple of points on here. And so now we're going to use the things that we've learned to draw ourselves a rough sketch. So one of the things that we've learned is how to look at the x-intercepts. And so we know we can say that x minus 3 equals 0. So add 3 to both sides. So we know this graph is going to cross the x-axis at positive 3. We also know when we solve x plus 1 equals 0. So we'll subtract 1 from both sides. The graph will cross the x-axis at negative 1. And then 7x minus 2 equals 0. We would add 2 to both sides and then divide by 7. So the graph will also cross the x-axis at 2 sevenths, so something less than a half on the positive side. We also know that if we take all of the constant numbers and we multiply them together, that um, we will figure out where it crosses the y-axis. So negative 3 times 1 times negative 2 gives us positive 6. So this graph is going to cross at positive 6 on the y-axis. And then if we take a look at the leading term, we'll be able to figure out the end behavior. So we've got x times x times 7x. So x times x times 7x gives us a leading term of 7x cubed. So we have an odd degree that's positive. So remember, that's going to start down on the left and go up on the right. So we know that the arrow for this graph is going to be down over here and up over here. So then now it's just kind of connecting to make sure some of those things happen. And again, you're just drawing a rough sketch, but we know it's going to have to go up through this first intercept. It's going to have to go all the way up to this y-intercept and then back down, okay, to this one. So something like this. And then back down through this x-intercept and then back up through this one. So we've got it down on the left, up on the right, going through each of these um, zeros. Number two, draw a rough sketch of this one. So again, let's draw some axes here. And so um, we'll draw in a couple points here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then let's go ahead and find the x intercepts. So we have x plus 1 equals 0. So we'll subtract 1 from both sides and get x equals negative 1. Now this factor is here two times. So this one has a multiplicity of 2. That means it's not going to go through this 0. It's just going to touch it. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then x minus 4 equals 0. Add 4, so we get x equals 4. So we're at negative 1, and 4 is where this is going to cross the x-axis. And then we can multiply the 1 and the negative 4 together. And that gives us negative 4 for our y-intercept, or where it will cross the y-axis. And then we can also take a look at our leading term. Now be careful here because there's two of these, okay? So we actually have x times x for that one and then times x again. So our leading term is x cubed. So that one's again going to be down on the left and up on the right, okay? So it's going to be down over here and then up over here. Now when we talk about this multiplicity of 2, Okay, so when we come to this 0, it's just going to immediately go back down. So it's just going to touch at it and go back down. Where this one, it's going to go through it. Okay, so this one's going to just touch it and come back down. 
and then we know it's going to go touch, go back down, and it's going to go through here, and then it's going to go back up. And kind of where you can find the minimum is about halfway between these two zeros. So we'll get a minimum about halfway between. So that's why I went through um, that y-intercept and started and went lower versus going down and coming straight back up. Your minimum um, is going to happen between the two zeros. But so this is an even multiplicity where it just touches. And then this is an odd multiplicity. Number three, predict the end behavior of each polynomial function, then check your prediction using technology. So I'm not going to check using technology. I'll just tell you whether um, it's right or wrong. So when we look at this, if we're looking at um, end behavior, okay, so we're looking at multiplying these first terms together so we can come up with the leading term. So x times x is x squared times 3x is 3x cubed times x is 12x to the fourth. So this is an even degree and it's positive. So your end behavior is going to do something like this. The ends are going to both be going up. So as x gets larger and larger, positive or negative, f of x is going to get larger positive. Um, B, so we'd be looking at this one. Now remember, there's two of these because of this x because of this squared right here. So we're doing negative x times negative x times negative x. So this is going to be positive x squared times negative x would be negative x cubed. So this is an odd degree, meaning the ends are going to do opposites and it's a negative. So that's going to start high and then go low. So as x goes larger and larger negative, your function is going to go larger and larger positive. As x goes larger and larger positive, meaning the right side, f of x is going to go larger and larger negative, meaning down. C, okay, so we'll have this to get our leading term. We've got this negative 1 right here. Then we've got this negative 3x. And then we've got this x to the fourth. So we'll multiply all of those together and we'll get positive 12x to the fifth. So now it's an odd degree and it's positive. So that's going to start down and go high. So as x goes to the left, meaning negative, so when we're looking at the negative x's, the function is also going to the negative, larger and larger negative. As x gets larger and larger positive, meaning this right side, the function is also getting larger and larger positive. And then this last one, so we've got negative x to the sixth power. So we're going to be multiplying together six of these. So if you wanted to write them all out, you could. You can also remember if you multiply a negative together an even amount of times, that's going to be positive. And then we've got x to the sixth. So this leading term is an even degree and a positive lead coefficient. So these are both going to be going to the positive side. So as x approaches either the positive large numbers or the negative large numbers, the function is always going to be getting bigger. So on the right side, the function is going to the positive, and on the left side, the function is going to a positive. Number four, which term can be added to the polynomial expression, this, to make it a tenth degree polynomial? So degree means exponent. So we're looking for an exponent of a 10, and we see that in term D, x to the 10th. Number five, um, f of x is this polynomial of x plus 1 times x minus 6. And g of x is 2 times x plus 1, x minus 6. Label um, the graphs below. So remember that this um, number multiplied, if you multiply a function, so this g of x is really 2 times the f of x function. Since x plus 1, x minus 6 is the f of x function, so this 2 out front is just going to vertically stretch the f function. 
So it's going to make the F function taller or further away from the X axis. So G of X is this dotted function, okay, pulling that function further away from the X axis than the other function. So this is G of X. The dotted line is G of X. And the solid line is F of X. Number six, state the degree and the end behavior of this function. Um, so we want to look at the leading term. Okay, so we want to find the highest degree exponent, which is right here. So the degree of this function is four, which is even, meaning the ends will be doing the same thing. They're either both going up or both going down. And since the um, leading coefficient was positive, they're both going to be going up. So on both ends, they're going to be going up. So as the x goes to larger and larger positive or negative, okay, so larger and larger positive or negative, the function is going to be going larger and larger positive. So the left side or the right side, okay, so this is really the right side, or the left side, the graph is going up is what that's saying. Number seven, the graph of the polynomial function f is shown below. Select all true statements, okay? So the degree of the polynomial is even or odd. Well, since we see both arrows going the same direction, that means it's going to be even. Odd means opposite directions. The leading coefficient is positive or negative? Well, both arrows are going down, so that means that the leading coefficient is negative. And then E and F talk about the constant term being positive or negative. Remember, the constant term means where does it cross the y-axis. So when we look here, it's crossing the y-axis at positive 3. So the, the constant term is going to be positive, not negative.